Let's talk about solutions to differential equations. So solutions to DEs. So there's all types of solutions to DEs, all types of, all types of terminology. Say you have something like y equals 3x squared plus c. So this is called a one parameter one parameter family of solutions family of solutions so you have infinitely many solutions one for each choice of c say you had something like this uh, c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 5x this, is, this would be called a two-parameter family of solutions. So two-parameter family of solutions. And you have infinitely many solutions again, and all you have to do is you can pick the C's. So there's infinitely many choices for the C's. If you pick the C's, say I pick C1 equal to 1, so that would give me e to the 2x, and then c2 equals to 3. That would give me e to the 5x. This one doesn't have any constants in it. It doesn't have any arbitrary constants. This is called a particular solution. Particular solution. And it's free from arbitrary parameters. That's why it's called a particular solution. It has, it has no c's. So free from arbitrary parameters. Okay, so if it has one C, it's called a one parameter family of solutions. If it has two C's, it's called a two parameter family of solutions. If it doesn't have any C's, it's called a particular solution. And there's one more that's really important. Uh, y equals zero. This is a special case. Whenever it's zero, we call it the trivial solution. So the trivial solution all of these are called explicit solutions. Okay, explicit solutions because we have y explicitly defined in terms of x. So, right, they all look like y equal stuff with x's only, right? So, we have specifically solved for y. So these are all explicit solutions. If y is not explicitly given by a formula in terms of x, or the other uh, independent variable, we'll just use x for clarity, uh, you have what's called an implicit solution. For example, if we had ln x plus y uh, minus y squared equals e to the x plus x plus c. This here is not an explicit solution. This is called an implicit solution. So this is an implicit solution. Okay, so explicit means you, you solve for y. Um, let's do a simple example uh, to illustrate another key concept. Uh, say we have uh, this differential equation xy prime plus y equals zero. And we want to show that y equals 1 over x is a solution to this DE. And we're also going to find what's called the interval of definition. So find the interval of definition. Okay, so to show it's a solution, um, all we have to do is plug this function into this differential equation. So solution. So I'm going to start by writing down the function again. So y is equal to 1 over x. And uh, now we'll take the derivative of this. So to do that, you can write it as x to the negative 1. Right? You can take this and bring it upstairs. And take the derivative, you would use the power rule. So you put the negative 1 in the front, so you get negative x. The negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So you get negative 1 over x squared. So y prime is equal to negative 1 over x squared. 
So now all we have to do is plug it into our differential equation. So we have x, y prime, plus y. So that's equal to x, then y prime, we said was this right here. So this is negative 1 over x squared, plus y, and then y is right here. So 1 over x. Okay, so all we've done is plug in the function and its derivative into our DE. The x's cancel, so we get negative 1 over x plus 1 over x, and it's equal to 0. Hurrah! So it checks. We started with this, and we showed it's equal to 0, which is the DE up here. So it is indeed a solution. That's what it means for a function to be a solution. Okay, now we have to find the interval of definition. So to do that, I'm going to graph 1 over x. So 1 over x looks like this, and it has uh, a vertical asymptote at 0 and a horizontal asymptote at zero. And it looks like this. And so we have to find what's called the interval of definition. Now the domain of this function is negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity, right? So it's everything uh, except zero. But that is not the interval of definition. The interval of definition is the largest interval over which the solution is defined. So this here is not an interval, okay? By definition, an interval is a set where if you pick any two numbers in that set, every number between them is also in that set. This set here does not satisfy that, right? Because I can pick negative 1 and 2, and then 0 fails, right? 0 is not in this set. So this is not an interval. So what is the interval of definition? Well, it's up to us, actually. We can pick this one. So we can pick negative infinity to 0, or we can pick um, this one. So we can pick 0 to infinity. So I'm just going to pick 0 to infinity, and we'll call that the interval of definition. So you get to pick whichever one you like um, most of the time. <laughs> um, so I hope that made sense. Um, let's, let's do one more example. Let's do one more example. Since we're talking about solutions, Let's finish talking about solutions. There's one other key idea. Say we have this, this differential equation, dy dx equals x square root of y. Okay, And what we know that a one-parameter family of solutions family of solutions is given by this. y equals uh, one-fourth x squared plus c quantity squared. So this is a, a nonlinear DE because we have that square root of y. So y to the 1 half power. It's actually really easy to solve. And they're giving us the answer. And the question is, is there another solution? So is there another solution to this differential equation, right, that's not given by this one parameter family? So how would you figure that out? Well, just observation. The answer is yes. And the answer is y equals 0. y equals 0 is a solution to this differential equation. You can check. If y equals 0, then dy dx, well, the derivative is also 0 because it's a constant, right? The derivative of 0 is 0. So if you take y equals 0 and take dy dx equals 0 and plug them back in here, you get 0 equals x times the square root of 0. So you get 0 equals 0. Yep. So 0 is a solution. So this is a solution that we can't get by picking c. right? We can't get y equals 0. There's no, there's no c we can pick that's going to make this 0. So this is called a singular solution. So whenever you have a solution that you can't get by picking values of c, it's called a singular solution. So we can't get it. We cannot get this by picking c. Right? It's impossible. So whenever you have a solution that you cannot get by picking values of c, it is called a singular solution. Super, super important. If it turns out to be the case that you can get all the solutions by picking values of c, you have what's called the general solution. Let me write that down. It's really important. So if we can get all solutions, 
So if you can get every single solution by picking C, we have what's called the general solution. We have the general solution. So in this case, this one parameter family here is not the general solution, right? Because here is a solution that we could not get by picking values of C. Hence the name singular, so it's a singular solution, right? If it were the case that we can get all the solutions, then we would have what was called the general solution. Whenever you have a linear differential equation, you always have the general solution. That's a big, big result from differential equations. Um, I hope that video made sense. It was a lot of information, and uh, in the next video, uh, we'll briefly talk about what's called initial value problems. That's it.